press the one. No. To receive a call back when a customer service representative becomes available, press 1 to remain on hold, press 2, or for a short description for a call back, please press 4. Your call back number has been recognized as 9566. Your estimated wait time is about 17 oh my minutes. God. <laughs> to receive a call back, The uh, lower section, the, the, what's the, the refrigerator. The refrigerator. Come on. Whereabouts? Uh, way on the bottom part of the fridge. The evaporator coil. Yeah. It's on the evaporator coil. Yes, yes, that is correct. Is that what you mean? Yes. I'm sorry, is that what we're talking about? Yes. Okay. Do you have access to service matters? No, we don't. No, we don't. Do you have access to your email? Yes, sir. Let me email you the service pointer. Let me know when you're ready to give me your, your email address. Uh, I just sent you the service pointer about that uh, fresh fruit evaporator frosting over. Okay. Uh, the date code does fall in line so that the, uh, the special project will cover the, the labor for this issue. Uh, there's an S code right there on the first page, S16360. Again, that's going to cover the cost of the labor for the customer. Any parts that you might need are not covered by that project. But um, if they have an extended warranty company, they might be able to charge it on that. But follow along that service pointer. Make sure every single step is performed per the pointer, and that should take care of things for them. All right. So let me uh, let me go ahead and go through the service pointer, and um, okay. And you know, I'll uh, go ahead and report back to the insurance. All right. Okay. Good luck. Yes, sir. Your contact you. line. Don't show me. Okay. So here's a. Uh, Here's the service pointer. Uh, KitchenAid, Whirlpool French Door Refrigerators, Frost Buildup on Evaporator. Models uh, KitchenAid KFIS, KRFF. This one's KRFF. That's right here, right? KRFF. Serial numbers K212S code to cover. Models have unique thermistor placements. The placement described in this pointer is specific to the models listed above. Possible concern, it is possible that consumers may experience uh, frost or hard ice forming on the front area of the refrigerator compartment, RC. In some instances, consumers may also see water inside the refrigerator compartment. Under CRISPR, these symptoms can result from multiple possible causes, so it is important to follow all the correction steps below. Correction. During inspection, all the correction steps must be confirmed. Door labeling. Okay, that's one. Door gasket sealing. Thermistor location. That's the real important one. The little thermistor on the evaporator coil right now. Press these two. Three seconds. Test mode one. FC thermistor good. Zero one means good for test one. Test two. Zero one. Thermistor checks good. Hold on.
Okay. So they recommend changing the defrost selection, Joe, mm -hmm. uh, to change it for an eight hour runtime instead of adaptive defrost control on that service bulletin, on that service test seven. I already changed it. Um, that's one. Let me go back to uh, test six. Right here. Mm -hmm. Defrost heater bimetal. If bimetal is open, it will need to be bypassed for a heater to operate. Heater should be on display, will blank until a valid reading is displayed. Zero one means that the bimetal is closed. So there's there should be ice on it, or or yeah. it should be to cold temperature, and then zero to two means it's open. But right now we have a closed switch. So okay, let's check that. Man, forward. Okay, this is the switch, the thermistor that we need to check. This one right there, the black one. Seventy nine K or seven point nine K? That's seven thousand ohms. Can you see the chart? Hold on, let me pull it up because they're sending me another one. Here we go. So it's seven point nine K with an eight point four K. Plus minus one percent, it's off. See, plus minus one percent, it's off. Como que es tie them in los. Just as conductor. long as they're facing up. Yeah. That way no water gets in them. They have silicone inside them. Yeah. I don't want no water going in. Make it look pretty. Pretty. Yes, sir. Pretty beardy. Yeah. There we go. In the lane. Can't do it, Joe. Mande? It's okay, it's almost like in the box. That's because I took out a lot of ice. Yeah. Three days ago. That's almost three, four days ago. A little bit of warm water. Let's see. We're at 34, 36 degrees, that's good, right here. So 36 degrees, we were reading 7.9. And we're at 3.0. See what it stabilizes at. It's supposed to be at 7.9 K ohms at 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Thirty-eight degree water, and it's stabilized right in here at five point seven k ohms. So this sensor is way off compared to what we we're testing it yesterday in the water. We have here thirty-eight degree water, 
and at 36 degrees we're supposed to be at 7.9 and right here we're at 5.7 so you can obviously see that this sensor was our issue and that's what we did change out so that this is what uh, causes uh, interference uh, longer uh, runtime and a uh, shorter defrost time so